Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thursday was an historic day in a Senate committee with more than its fair share of history. In our deliberations over the nomination of Judge Brett Kavanaugh to fill the vacancy on the Supreme Court, we have confronted some of the most serious charges ever leveled against a nominee. Those charges were made at a moment in our nation's history when we are living through a cultural revolution. Women in America are not only emerging into more and more positions of responsibility, they are now airing grievances over sexual harassment and abuse at every level of society. Caught in the vortex of this cultural shift, there is not a person in this room who can truly measure the trajectory or ultimate <coughs> outcome of this historic change. America is marching forward in the pursuit of justice for women in this country. Sadly, many on the Senate Judiciary Committee are still mired in the dead space it was 27 years ago during the Clarence Thomas nomination hearing. Yesterday in this room, America saw this inflammatory issue in real time, in real life. Dr. Christine Blasey Ford was credible, cooperative, and resolute. When I asked her directly, under oath, the degree of certainty that she had that she was assaulted by Brett Kavanaugh, she responded, 100%. When the prosecutor on the Republican side tried to weave a political conspiracy or make her a tool of her lawyers, it fell flat. This woman, who had identified Brett Kavanaugh as her assailant to her husband and therapist six years ago, believed she had a responsibility as a citizen as a citizen to come forward and tell her story. I thought about the words she used during the course of her testimony yesterday. The words she used more often than not to describe her motives was helpful, helpful. She wanted to be helpful to this committee and to her nation. I believe her. But she was afraid in awakening those carefully guarded and painful memories, and she was afraid for her family. She confided in our colleague Diane Feinstein with the clear understanding that Diane would protect her identity, and I have no doubt that Diane accepted that responsibility and kept her word. Yesterday, two members of this committee leveled personal attacks at Senator Feinstein. They said she concealed Dr. Ford's letter for partisan reasons, and one went so far as to say that she leaked the contents of that letter, or her staff leaked that letter, to the press. Perhaps in this Trumpian era, those sorts of baseless personal charges are to be expected. But if we descend to this level of political discourse, we will have forsaken the traditions of the Senate and the comedy, which is essential to our public service. And for the record, this baseless claim was refuted immediately by The Intercept, which was first to publish the story about Dr. Ford's allegation. Their reporter said last night, and I quote, Feinstein staff did not leak the letter to the intercept. Yesterday, Dr. Ford made the personal decision to tell her story publicly. She came before this committee under oath and volunteered to answer every question. None of the Republicans on this committee were willing to question or confront her, not one. They sat silent as the prosecutor, Ms. Mitchell, tried to do their work. But after Dr. Ford completed her testimony and left the building, it was a different story. Last night on a TV show, one senator said, and I quote, Ms. Ford has got a problem, and destroying Judge Kavanaugh's life won't fix her problem. How could you listen to her honest and direct testimony and draw that conclusion? Judge Kavanaugh's opening statement yesterday was filled with raw emotion. Looking at his family and friends gathered to support him, one could not help but feel, as our colleague Senator Flake reminded us, that this undertaking is deeply personal and there's humanity to reconcile on both sides of the ledger. I could feel the intensity of what he has experienced over the last few weeks, but I could not understand how Judge Kavanaugh could say that he, quote, bore no ill will towards Dr. Ford then called her charges, quote, a calculated, orchestrated political hit, citing, quote, apparent pent-up anger about President Trump and his 2016 election, and, quote, 
Revenge on behalf of the Clintons. Revenge on behalf of the Clintons. This locker up grace note in Judge Kavanaugh's remarks may have raised a cheer in the White House, but at a sad moment in the history of this committee. The exchange I had with Judge Kavanaugh was an honest effort to loose the Gordian knot this committee faces when two sworn witnesses are in direct contradiction. What I asked for, what many have asked for, is obvious. Turn over the facts we know to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Let them connect the dots. Let them complete the investigation. Then let us meet and evaluate their findings. Do you remember yesterday when on several occasions the Republicans made a point of quoting the American Bar Association? Chairman, I would like permission to enter into the record a letter sent to this committee on September 27, 2018 by the American Bar Association. Without objection, it will be entered. Let me read it. This is what the committee received. The American Bar Association urges the Senate Judiciary Committee and, as appropriate, the full Senate to conduct a confirmation vote on Judge Kavanaugh's nomination to the Supreme Court of the United States only after an appropriate background check into the allegations made by Professor Ford and others is completed by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We make this request because of the ABA's respect for the rule of law and due process under law. The basic principles that underscore the Senate's constitutional duty of advice and consent on federal judicial nominees require nothing less than a careful examination of the accusations and facts by the FBI. Each appointment to our nation's highest court, as with all others, is simply too important to rush to a vote. Deciding to proceed without conducting additional investigation would not only have a lasting impact on the Senate's reputation, but it will also negatively affect the great trust necessary for the American people to have in the Supreme Court. It must remain an institution that will reliably follow the law and not politics. Respectfully, the Senate should recognize that a thorough FBI investigation will demonstrate its commitment to a Supreme Court that is above reproach. That letter was signed by Robert Carlson, president of the American Bar Association. Yeah. All the quotes yesterday about the ABA's finding on Judge Kavanaugh are a distant second to what we've been asked by the same organization to do, and it is not an unreasonable request. So who is telling the truth? Two sworn witnesses in direct contradiction. But there is one significant difference. One of these sworn witnesses has stepped forward and said, I will submit my testimony and myself to the Federal Bureau of Investigation understanding that anyone lie, who lies to the Federal Bureau of Investigation is subject to criminal prosecution. The other witness evaded that question over and over and over. Oh, I'll leave it up to the committee. It's up to the chairman. You're going to have to decide on that. You make that decision. Judge Kavanaugh knows better. He knows that if he had turned yesterday to the White House counsel and says, suspend this until we have an FBI investigation to clear my name, my reputation, and my nomination to this court. It was the right thing to do because those scales had been tipped in favor of the one <clears throat> sworn witness who was willing to take her case before the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I'll be voting no on the nomination.